Hey you guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna be attempting to install an Apple CarPlay hack into my Porsche 911 991. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, welcome back. So this is a feature I'm really excited about. If I can pull it off, I think it's gonna be really, really cool for my car. Um, I put an aftermarket uh, Kenwood unit into my 996 and an aftermarket Sony unit into my 997. And while they were both very functional, they just ruined, well not ruined, but they changed the look of the inside of the car because they weren't stock. Um, so with my Cayenne, uh, which unfortunately only has the basic PCM, no uh, satellite navigation, no streaming media capabilities. Um, I've resisted putting in an aftermarket uh, head unit because I like the way the stock dash looks. And that's especially true for my 991. Now I came across uh, a couple of articles on the, uh, on the forums um, that talked about a, a couple of different companies that sold uh, these kits that you can install um, inside and in addition to the stock PCM 3.1 unit within, within the car itself um, and put wireless CarPlay capabilities in there um, without changing the look of the car. So that's what I'm gonna try and install today. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I hate uh, jobs that involve electronics. I'm really good with software, I'm really good with apps, I'm really bad with hardware, or at least I just don't enjoy the jobs. Um, now, I think the easy part is gonna be taking the head unit out of the car. That looks relatively straightforward. After that, I've gotta open up the PCM unit. I've gotta install an additional motherboard. I've gotta rewire um, cables into the new motherboard and some additional cables here, there, and everywhere. I've gotta put a Wi-Fi antenna in there. Then I've gotta put it back together, and then I've gotta wire it up to another um, to another box, an aftermarket box from this uh, vendor, um, which is then gonna sit somewhere within the dash. And that's gonna help project the CarPlay uh, software into the PCM as an, uh, an AUX input, I believe. Uh, we're gonna find out in a minute. Um, so it's gonna be a sort of three, four step kind of process. It's probably gonna take me a couple of hours. I'm gonna film it um, a little bit this evening and a little bit tomorrow. Um, you know, sort of over the weekend. Uh, I'm again, you know, kind of like 80% excited, 20% nervous, and once again, for these jobs, it's probably the other way around. Um, but let's take a look at the kit, let's take a look at the tools that we're gonna need, and then let's get into the job. So let's take a look at the components. Um, the brand is Joy Auto, and I found this uh, through Google on AliExpress. I think it's Alibaba, basically, um, the AliExpress website. And they make this component for a whole number of different cars. You can get it for Porsche, Audi, Land Rover, Toyota, um, any number of different brands. And even then within Porsche, um, you have a choice whether or not um, you, know, you want this for the Cayman, the, the, uh, the Boxster, uh, the 911, the Cayenne, and the Macan. I think um, they have a, a variant of this for any of the, uh, the Porsche cars that have the, um, the PCM 3.1. So um, it comes in this box. Let's get it open and, uh, and see what's in the box. So this is nice, a, uh, a wiring diagram, uh, installation guide. Um, and from the research I've done, essentially, uh, this sort of validates um, what I understand the job entails. We take out the PCM. Um, we essentially take out a few screws, uh, which then allow us to put this new motherboard on top and then put the screws back in. And then we have to do some uh, juggling with some of the existing, um, some of the existing uh, cables and some new cables from the motherboard. 
um, and then that plugs into um, the component I'm going to take out of the box in a second uh, and we've got some additional wiring harnesses so got to obviously you know keep that safe uh, now let's open the box itself So this is the multimedia unit that sort of makes all the magic happen. Um, you can see here that we've got um, sort of, uh, it looks like uh, video in, video out, the microphone, um, that's gonna be uh, for the, the, the microphone itself so that you can talk to uh, Siri um, by pressing the CarPlay button. Um, it looks like it's got an HDMI cable, um, the power cable, and then on this side, uh, USB, um, it looks like it's got a mini USB connection here for potentially making updates um, and then a, uh, a Wi-Fi antenna and a couple of other um, a couple of other uh, ports. I'm not sure we're going to need them all. Um, there are sort of like good and bad things about this. The good thing is that once you put the PCM back together and it goes back into the dashboard, this lives underneath the tray by the steering wheel. So it's relatively easy to get to. So I guess if there is an Apple update um, for CarPlay or firmware for this uh, multimedia interface, um, you're able to do that without having to take apart your dashboard uh, and taking apart all of your trim and pulling out PCM again. The downside is that you've got a component that you've got to try and find a place for underneath your steering wheel somewhere. So that's gonna be fun and games trying to figure that out. But anyway, this is the magic box essentially that makes it all happen. Um, we then, I imagine, have got a bunch of wiring harnesses that are going to allow us to sort of put it all together. Um, oh, and of course, the, the motherboard itself. Uh, so I'm not going to take this out right away and get my fingerprints on it. But essentially, here's the motherboard. Looks like um, we've got a couple of uh, screw heads that's going to help us get to the very small screws inside. Um, we've got a couple of cables here that are going to connect to uh, some of the ports on the back of the motherboard and then also on the back of the, the existing PCM motherboard. And then here we have a variety of wiring harnesses um, and microphones and so on. So it's all going to either go into the back of the PCM unit um, and into the back of the video cable. Um, so that looks like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> We're going to find out. Um, we've got an aux jack. Um, we have what essentially looks like um, a uh, multi-purpose wiring harness. So um, if you have uh, backup cams and forward-facing cams, you can plug it into these ports, um, which will then present it through the car face, sorry, the car play interface. Um, and make it all work again within the PCM unit. Um, now, I don't have that on my car, so these are going to just remain behind the, uh, the dash and they're not going to be used. Um, so I'll be using some of these, but not all of them. Um, and then we have these slightly beefier wiring harnesses, which will go into the back of the PCM unit. Um, and I think they extend the existing wiring at the back, but we're going to find out more about that as we go. Looks like we've got a fuse here, um, which may plug into our fuse box. Um, I wasn't actually expecting that, so uh, I'm going to need to do a bit more research and figure out how that fits into it all. It also looks like we have a USB cable here that goes into the back of the multimedia device. Um, from my understanding, this will go down um, alongside, sort of out of the steering wheel, underneath the co steering column, down into the footwell, which will give you the ability to do the uh, USB mirroring, just like that you can do um, with other aftermarket head units. So. Um, you know, for whatever reason, if you didn't want to use uh, Apple CarPlay via um, wireless, you can do USB. And from what I understand, you have to, if you have an Android device, you have to do the USB mirroring. I don't think there's wireless support for Android, but I could be wrong. Um, we've got an aux jack cable. Um, we have the microphone, uh, which will wire up uh, behind the uh, rear view mirror. Um, and then back down underneath the steering wheel and into the back um, of this jack here, I think. Um, and then it looks like we have a sort of pretty standard uh, wireless antenna. So pretty complicated stuff. Um, I think I'm definitely gonna need to take my time. It doesn't look impossible, 
um, but through uh, Joy Auto's uh, YouTube video, the installation uh, instructions here in the wiring diagram, hopefully I've got everything I need. Okay, so to take out the uh, to take out the PCM, I've got to take out these two pieces of trim either side of the center console, uh, and then I've got a couple of screws, and then um, the PCM comes out. I need to twist it around, pull it out, um, look over to the back, and then uh, just take out the wires. Fingers crossed. This looks relatively straightforward. As these uh, clips just pop out, but you never know. And I really don't want to break any trim clips. And then if it's anything like the 997, it helps to just release the glove box there. There we go. Let's see. Thankfully, no trim clips broken. And same for this side. Actually, it looks like I need to take these two little pieces of plastic out either side so that I can get the PCM out. <coughs> Keep them there so I don't lose them. So these look like T25s or T20s. I'm gonna guess 25. Yeah! All right, so we got four T25s to remove. Now, I've got to be very careful not to damage the center console, so I'm going to see if I can, and the, the gear shifter, so I'm going to see if I can just get it into drive. Okay, I'm going to get it into drive. I'm also going to put this microfiber towel over the center so I don't damage anything. I think that's it. I think it's just those four screws. Let's see. Yeah. Uh. Okay, here's a tip. Um, these are all pretty tricky to take out. Um, you need to push the top of these uh, plugs in and then pull out, and they're really stiff. Uh, it actually hurts your fingers. But this one is deceiving. It looks like multiple plugs, where actually it's just one. Um, so you lift, you pull, uh, you push up here and slide Fuck, I've forgotten how to do it now. <laughs> there you go. This actually comes back and then you pull the entire thing out um, as opposed to trying to pull out the plugs from the back individually because that's not going to work. So this is actually one giant uh, harness. So I actually need to put the blue and green back into here um, the way it was, this blue and this green harness. So anyway, quick tip. All right, you guys, so here's where the job starts to get complicated. Uh, first, I need to dismantle the PCM unit, and I'm gonna use a T8 screwdriver uh, to get these one, two, three, four screws off. And then I think it's just a question of prying open the front by pushing down on a couple of these tabs here. So let's go and see if we can get it apart.
Now, from what I can tell, there are um, there are two wires uh, in here, or two cables. Um, I believe they need to be unclipped so that I can actually pull this apart. Okay, so I do need to unplug these two cables. Uh, and in order to do that, it looks like I need to push these little plastic clips upwards, gently on either side. And then the cables should just pull out. Okay, easy enough. Um, on the back here, you see these two plastic uh, cable receivers. Um, they pull up and down. So you push the cable in between um, this little metal uh, edge here and the plastic, and then push that down to hold it in place. So just for now, I'm gonna keep it pushed down, um, you know, and then I'll bring them back up when I put the, uh, the thing together. Okay, now to open the box. Okay, so I believe all I need to do now is remove these three T8 screws. I think they're T8 screws. The back. And now with the blue cables pushing forward, um, and the labels on the bottom, I'm, I've got to force um, these two parts open. It almost seems unnatural, but they do come apart if you give, if, if you sort of pull them this way a little bit and then separate them. I haven't needed to push in any tabs or use any screws, uh, you know, use any screwdrivers, but now I have successfully managed to pull it apart. And I th uh, I'm now gonna start um, taking out, I think, this cable and then start putting in the, uh, the other motherboard. So let's go ahead and do that now. So at this point in the job, I hit a problem. You're given these three screw extenders um, that you put in onto the existing circuit board uh, by removing the three screws that are there, which allow you to place the motherboard on top of everything that's in the box um, on like a platform. The problem was the screw extenders weren't tall enough to allow me to uh, put the, the circuit board on top of the smaller circuit board you can see there with the white sticker and the yellow plug, which is the Sirius satellite radio. Uh, so at one point I, I did actually remove that entire little circuit board, uh, just thinking, you know, I never listened to, to digital radio anyway, so do I need the board? But then I thought there are probably lots of people watching this video that want to keep digital radio and not lose it. So I reached out to a few folks on Facebook and a couple of people who have been following my posts uh, on my Instagram and YouTube about this hack uh, that have done it before that had some advice. So what I ultimately did was include, sorry, was to use uh, two of the screw extenders on top of each other on the top left hand corner there um, w and just use that one place to mount the circuit board. The rest of the circuit board just sits neatly on top of the Sirius XM circuit board if I had some more screw extenders, I would have put them elsewhere, but I just used them in the one place. So to save the digital radio, um, just, just put two of the screw extenders on top of each other in the top left-hand corner there, um, and then you're able to retain everything else. The only other thing you need to do though, is to just make a hole on the left-hand side of the box there by my little finger, where, the, uh, where that black cable exits the box because you then need to uh, bring in the CarPlay uh, cable 
which then plugs into the top of the new circuit board. But I'll show you that later in the video. Okay, well that part of the job certainly wasn't pretty, but I've at least made a hole um, that allows me, I think, to get this uh, cable through. Which is all I, you know, which is the most important thing. Um, okay, so you need to put this cable in uh, with the little pins facing upwards. Don't put it in the other way. It's the only way it's going to slot in. And it just clicks into place. So there we go. I've got the Sirius XM uh, connector here. I've got a little hole um, that I've drilled and sort of expanded with needle nose pliers through the metal cage here. Uh, or the you know metal surround this is still going to be flush when i put the device back together so it's still going to work now i've got to put the cables in so these are the two oem cables from the original motherboard um, and they're going to go in on top of each other so the larger one goes into the large pin uh, or hole and um the uh the port sorry and the smaller one goes into the second and then these are the two new cables that come to connect to the new motherboard and you're going to go small to small and you're going to go large to large of course and then these are going to fit through the case and connect to the front of the PCM just like the other two. So what we're essentially doing is creating another link in the chain so instead of the original motherboard with these two cables connecting directly to the front of the PCM the originals going into the new and then the new cables large and small are going into the front of the PCM. So like last time, I'm going to use my tweezers um, to open up on either side the plastic retaining clips, slip the cables in, and then use a flathead screwdriver to just push down on each side to trap the cables in place. Okay, so we have the new circuit board. The two OEM cables have gone into it. They're gonna get flattened down uh, when we put the device back together. Oh, the other thing I need to do is connect up the other large cable from the other half of the board um, into the base, into the original OEM connector. Okay, now we're going to reassemble the device. So before um, we start putting it back in the car, I wanted to show you how all of the wiring sort of fits together. And it kind of brings this wiring diagram to life a little bit. I don't know about anyone else, but I hate wiring diagrams, especially when they're not um, sort of accurate visually. Like, so I, you, this is great. Here's a, here's a photo. Um, but when we start getting into the diagrams and the connectors don't quite look how they look in real life, I start to get confused. So 
um, I've taken some time to piece this together and here it is. So let me just explain how it all fits together before we start putting it in the car. Um, first off, this is a 48, I think it's 48 pin um, adapter. So this goes into the back of the PCM unit which allows us to then use this connect to the existing wiring harness. So I think um, what this allows us to do is create um, another input for the back of the PCM unit, um, giving us some additional pins. So that's gonna connect to the existing harness in the car. Um, continuing on with this wiring harness, here is the power um, that connects in and goes to the back of the Joy Auto box, which says power. Um, we then have this, uh, is it seven, milli, uh, seven millimeter audio in jack? Um, so if this is, well, yeah, so the audio jack, so this connects up to um, this jack, which is in the, this back part of the wiring harness, which also goes uh, here into the, uh, the power, uh, yeah, the power socket. Um, we then have the video in, um, cable for the PCM unit, which goes to the video out cable uh, in the back of the Joy Auto. In fact, I had to take this out previously, so let me just put this back in. I'll make sure that's in properly later. Um, but there is a, it goes to LCD out. So the uh, Apple CarPlay is projected through this cable into the PCM unit. Um, so that's all of the stuff coming out of the back of uh, the PCM and then we'll of course still have some other cables to connect up here that are still in the back of the car so the Sirius XM radio whatever that is um, and I think there's, uh, there's two over here that'll need to go back in um, so in the unit itself we have a mic cable that's connected to a microphone now I've seen some people install these along the side um, of the rear view mirror um, and then take the wiring around the outside of the windscreen and down to the steering column and up behind. Um, I've seen other people take off this uh, fuzzy head um, and just put the microphone uh, down at the very base of the, uh, the steering column, just sort of on the right-hand side at the top. Um, so you're essentially talking into the steering wheel as opposed to up and at the rearview mirror. Um, I'll see what I like um, or whatever's the easiest, frankly, to install. We then have a USB in and out um, through this connector here. This gives us the ability to put a, um, a hardwired USB cable downside of one of the consoles, um, or if you want to, um, out into the glove box, which is maybe where I'm gonna try and put it, um, or even into the center armrest, if you wanna start taking the center console apart, which I don't think I'm going to. Um, but there's the USB. And then finally, this is the Wi-Fi antenna, which just screws onto the back. So that's the wiring diagram brought to life. Now we have the fun job of trying to get that all back in the car. So that obviously is gonna go into the center console. Um, I'm gonna disconnect this so that I can push the wires down, try and figure out how to get them out of the back of the center console and under down into the footwell. And then this thing is gonna be going underneath the steering column, uh, which is the recommendation from Joy Auto. I've no idea where it's actually gonna go. So we've got a little bit of fiddling there to do. Oh, and then the last thing I forgot to mention was um, there is a fuse, and this um, is the sort of key to getting everything powered up. Um, somebody who's done this before has put this into uh, D1, which is a spare slot, unless you've got, um, I think D1 is also used for parking sensors. So if you've got parking sensors, you might have to use one of the other free slots. Um, now I have to also figure out how to get this inside the fuse panel. Um, so, uh, you know, some fun and games ahead of me, probably another couple of hours worth of work, uh, but hopefully I'm at least kind of halfway there. So it looks like I can get the wiring down to the back of the center console to the left and have it come out right at the base of the steering wheel. Uh, but of course, I think it's gonna be a really fiddly job <laughs> and probably not best suited for guys with large arms um, and, you know, clumsy. <laughs> so we'll see, uh, see how I get on. But let's start with this. Well, at least the cables are long. Let's start with this long uh, power cable. Okay, so there's the power cable. Now let's take 
the fuse and the audio jack. And then what's left? Uh, oh yeah, this goes into the back of the system as well. This wire is not quite as long. This is the uh, the CarPlay video out. Okay. So they're all through. It's probably a good idea to um, put the uh, the shifter back at this point. <clears throat> okay, let's get this all back together. So this isn't yet turning into one of those jobs that I regret started, but I can see that it's definitely headed that way. <laughs> All right. Um, so I've got a bunch of cables I need to figure out what to do with. Um, I've got the Joy Auto box. I've got the microphone. And I think hopefully the microphone should be the easiest part. Um, I think the first thing I'm going to try and do is figure out what to do with the fuse. And I think I can get the fuse over the top here and down into the fuse panel from above. Well, that's nice. That looks like it comes off quite easily.
Nice, that just goes back in quite neatly. Uh, and now let's get the fuse panel on. Okay, so that's gone back into place quite neatly, thankfully. So that's one cable. Now, what else have we got? Uh, okay, we got the audio jack, which goes into the audio jack. We've got, we've got the LCD in, oh, sorry, the LCD out into the PCM. So that just clips into place there. I've got the microphone I can worry about in a second. The uh, antennas, uh, and, uh, I can't speak, antenna is in already. Um, and then I've got this USB cable which would be great if I could put into, be great if I could get that somehow into um, at least the other side hanging down. <clears throat> I'll try that in a second. Um, but okay, that's all of the wiring. Oh, of course, I've got to plug the power in. which is now in. Okay, so that's all of the wiring taken care of, which means I can now try and find a place to put this Joy Auto box. Um, which I've seen people put underneath here, underneath the steering column. I just don't know how well it's gonna stay there, frankly. I'll run the microphone last. All I need to do for now is just to keep it out of the way. I'm gonna try it here for now. Let's see what that, how that works. Let's see if it picks up everything I need it to pick up. Wow, you guys. Okay, I'm done. Finally, after about probably five hours worth of work all in all, um, I'm done. It works, it works perfectly. I hit a couple of hitches, um, but this is where I need to give a couple of shout outs. Daniel Tismal. I don't know where I came across you, mate, whether it was on Facebook and the 991 Enthusiast page or Instagram or the channel, but uh, when I came into trouble this afternoon, You've been very kind to instant message with me pretty much on and off for about two hours now. And um, you really just helped me sanity check my thinking and uh, the videos, this, this guy Daniel sent me videos of his install and photos and, and anyway, it's all done now. But Daniel, thank you very much. So the job's done. Everything's been put back together, kinda. Um, I've connected the phone up to the car. The sound quality is excellent. Uh, the, the, the CarPlay application is really cool. All of the apps that you'd expect, the maps, the music, um, you know, anything else that you want to put on there. I did run into a bit of a problem though. Uh, when I first installed um, the, the, the gadget gizmos and turned everything on, I could get the, um, I could get the iPhone to connect to the device. And I could get the audio moving but I, uh, and playing, but I couldn't get any video. And I wondered what on earth was going wrong. 
I've actually taken that device in and out of the car or out and back into the car four times now. I've opened it up again and I've checked every single connection, every wire, every ribbon cable, um, every setting, and I just couldn't get the video to work. And, and eventually what it was, was uh, the, um, the 48 pin adapter, whatever that is, um, was into the back of the car, was into the back of the PCM unit just fine. But the OEM wiring harness wasn't pushed in all the way <laughs> into the new wiring harness. One, there were like four pieces to it. One of them was pushed in and clipped in. The other two were in, but they weren't clipped in all the way. And then as soon as I turned the car on, boom, it works perfectly. And now I've started the car sort of several times and I don't have to do anything with my iPhone in the pocket. It just automatically connects up wirelessly. Ha! Huh. Woo! One for the wind book. Um, I'll say this though, I'd probably help a friend to do this out again, but if anybody wants to get this done, please, God, ask me quickly, because I am sure I'm gonna forget how to do it. It was really complicated. Where the Sports Chrono swap out was probably a four or a five out of 10, I would say that this one was probably an eight or a nine out of 10. Um, there were a couple of points where I thought maybe I should have taken this into a professional. Um, the, 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 the biggest job though is just making sure that you follow all the instructions, and uh, which I did, but make sure you follow through, which certainly on the wiring harness I didn't. Anyway, I hope this video uh, is helpful for anybody who's interested in the job. Um, it was about $350 from AliExpress. The company's called Joy Audio. Um, I'll be honest with you, their installation video, not great. Their instructions, also not great. So, I, and there are a couple of videos online of, of guys that have sort of done this and they didn't show half of what I've gone through today. So I think, and I'm not being arrogant, I'd like to say that this is the best Apple CarPlay installation video that I've found on YouTube so far. I hope you think so too. Um, if anybody wants to attempt this job and has any questions, please email me, IM me, you know, whatever it is, I'm more than happy to help. Uh, like I say, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna go and uh, listen to some tunes as I put this car back together and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.